Welcome. Today's topic is the properties of numbers. Today we're going to talk about four main properties, each of which has two parts, addition and multiplication. So let's get started with our first property, which is called the commutative property of addition. The commutative property of addition tells us that 6 plus 4 is equal to 4 plus 6. It might seem obvious, 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 6 is 10, so 10 equals 10, right? The commutative property of addition tells us that you can add numbers in any order. Think of a question to which this is the answer for your Cornell style notes. This is how you use the commutative property of addition. In a long addition problem, you can add up all your positives and negatives first, and then subtract. So let's take a look at an example. 5 plus negative 3 plus 11 plus negative 7 plus 4 plus negative 6 plus 2. While it's true that you could follow the order of operations, which tells us to add and subtract from left to right, it's easier if we first go ahead and use the commutative property to group together the numbers with like signs. So I'm going to make a group of all my positives. And adding these up, I see 5 plus 11 is 16, and 4 makes 20, and 2, that's 22 positive. And let's make a group of all our negatives. Negative 3 and 7 is 10, so I see negative 16. So those groups of the positives and the negatives would be called the subtotals. Now that we have a subtotal of positives and negatives, we can subtract because they have different signs. And because 22 is positive and that's the larger, the answer is going to be positive 6. The commutative property also has a commutative property of multiplication, which tells us that 3 times 7 is 21. 7 times 3, also 21. So 3 times 7 equals 7 times 3. In other words, you can multiply numbers in any order. Think of a question to which this is the answer for your Cornell notes. Our next main property is the associative property, of which we're going to have addition and multiplication as well. So here, let's take a look at what's in the grouping symbols. We have 2 plus 3, which is 5, and 5 plus 7 is 12. But if we shift the grouping symbols, now we have 3 plus 7, that's 10, plus 2 makes 12. So you can change the order of the grouping, and it does not change the sum. So, or what this says exactly is changing the grouping of the add-ins does not change the sum. Next, the associative property of multiplication tells us that 9 times 4, which is 36, times 5, is equal to 4 times 5, which is 20, times 9, 180. So, for me, it's easier to do it that second way, to multiply that 9 times 4 first. So the associative property allows you to regroup numbers for multiplication in ways that are more easy for you. So changing the grouping of the factors does not change the product. Next, we have our two identity properties. You're probably familiar with the word ID for like a driver's license or your student ID and that helps to identify you. The identity of the number 12 is 12. So its ID is zero because that keeps it as itself. So the identity, the additive identity is zero. The identity for multiplication is one because that's the number that makes any number multiply to get itself. So any number times 1 equals itself. The multiplicative identity is 1. The additive inverse property tells us that 15 plus negative 15 equals 0. Any number plus its additive inverse is 0. 
So additive inverse is a synonym for the opposite. Any number plus its opposite equals zero. A multiplicative inverse property tells us that six times one sixth equals one. It says that any number times its multiplicative inverse is one. So for me, this is a synonym for reciprocal because any number times its reciprocal equals one. All right, thank you.